Hi, my name is Henry. Today I'll be drawing my life. On February 6, 1979, Taipei, Taiwan, I was born. My mother told me that among my siblings, I was the easiest one to give birth to. I only took 30 minutes. Since the beginning, I was blessed or cursed with a giant forehead. Following the naming trend of my two older siblings, I was named Yao Jingxian, which really means nothing together. But when separated, it means lord or ruler and constitution. I did not talk too much. Sometimes I would call mom or dad in a quiet and fragile voice. I was so quiet my family thought I might have been deaf. One time, my grandfather sneaked up behind me and banged two paws right together really loud. Apparently, instead of crying or screaming, I just turned around and gave him a dirty look. My grandpa commented, At least he's not deaf. However, he does have an attitude. Once I started speaking regularly, according to my mom, I would never stop talking. I talked so much, my parents gave me the nickname Duo Duo, which means too much. Eventually, my crazy temperament got to my mom's nerve. So she decided to occupy my time by buying me 20 comic books about world histories. I got so hooked on those books, I developed a special interest in human nature, history, and civilization development. My dad traveled around the world looking for somewhere to immigrate. He decided Canada was the best. And so our family packed up and flew westward. I had a hard time adopting to life in Canada. I didn't speak English, I had no idea how things worked, and had no friends. As a result, I spent a lot of time in my own imagination and by drawing. Thankfully, some of our friendly neighborhood kids took me in. They taught me hockey, basketball, kick the can, had it go seek. Looking back, it was a wonderful time. If it weren't for the kids in the neighborhood, I might not have had such a fun childhood. I realized community gave me a huge sense of belonging and I felt accepted. And I grew up in Richmond. I went to Kingswood Elementary, Mike Roberts for junior high, and McNair for senior high. Yes. Back in my days, there were a junior high and a senior high in Richmond. In the beginning, I didn't really fit in. I had no guidance through my high school years. At first, I joined the other Taiwanese people at Mike Roberts. It was comfortable as we were all from the same culture, spoke the same language, and shared similar interests. However, it was a theater crew where I felt I belonged the most. Although we all had different cultural backgrounds, we shared a similar interest. We came together like a big family. Today, when I think about multiculturalism, I reflect the joy and acceptance I had when I was with my theater crew. I wanted to pursue a career in the field of script writing and directing. When I told my father that I was accepted into the theater program at UVic, he exploded. He felt that I wasted five years of my life already in high school pursuing theater. Out of frustration, I decided not to pursue a theater at UVic. I entered a quantum psychology program instead. I volunteered at Chimo Crisis Line and worked full-time as a security guard. My time at Quantum was uneventful, except I had a great encounter with a classmate who was like three times my age. He was a great mentor and he helped me understand the importance of mentorship and community connection. By the time I went to UBC, I was working full-time as a security guard while attending school. If I had a chance to give one piece of advice for students today, you would be focusing on schooling. In fourth year, I finally decided to diversify my experience, and I joined the UBC cheerleading team. I competed at a national level and we came ninth in nationals. I graduated from UBC with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. During the New Year's Eve 2004, while walking out of a restaurant with my friends, I felt a lump underneath my chin. I commented to my friend thinking I had cancer. He jokingly told me stop being an idiot. Unfortunately, a biopsy proved me correct. I was diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. I was lucky that lymph node that had been expanded was growing at an obvious location and I was able to be treated early. During the treatment, I lost 20 pounds. It was not a pleasant experience. The cancer gave me a wake-up call for life. In hopes to find more of a rewarding career path, I started volunteering again. I started volunteering for the Youth Volunteer Corps of Canada in West Richmond. 
I never knew how much I enjoyed mentoring youth and realized that if I had a mentor growing up, my life would have been much different. I decided to continue my service at Wife VCC and build out my interest and knowledge in the field of youth work. With the experience, I was finally able to land a job at Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House as a youth outreach worker. Although the job only paid 20 hours a week, I loved my job so much I worked like a full-time staff. This job helped me obtain the Child and Youth Activities Worker position with Richmond Youth Service Agency. Eventually, thanks to all the experience I had, I was hired as a Youth Development Coordinator at Richmond City Center Community Association. At City Center, I wanted more opportunities to mentor and empower youth. So I created several youth programs where youth could discover themselves and thrive. Over the years, I was amazed by the intelligence and dedication of youth in Richmond, and I developed an appreciation for the community. However, somewhere deep in my heart, I knew that all of our effort had no lasting impact in the community, and that they were only a temporary fix for larger issues. I wanted to make a strong, lasting, and positive impact. And so I found myself campaigning to enter Richmond City Council.